Okay, so this is a tutorial on the glenohumeral joint. So the glenohumeral joint is, as the name suggests, is a, um, a joint between the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. So you can see the glenoid cavity of the scapula here. Um, so this joint is a synovial ball and socket joint and it's quite an unstable joint because the head of the humerus is relatively large whereas the glenoid cavity of the scapula is actually quite shallow so it's very mobile because of this relationship between the shallow glenoid cavity and the large humeral head so because of this instability it's actually a very mobile joint so at this joint we have several movements we've got flexion and extension we've got abduction and adduction we've got internal rotation or medial rotation and we've also got external rotation and we've also got circumduction which is a combination of flexion extension abduction and adduction so there's a lot of movements at this joint so I've just brought the muscle layer in and you can see some of the muscles which surround this joint and actually add a bit of stability to it so you've got this deltoid muscle here um, you've got the pectoralis major at the front anteriorly you've got the long head of the biceps which comes up and um, goes over the glenohumeral joint and adds a bit of stability there um, at the back you've got the long head of the triceps tendon and you've obviously got the rotator cuff muscles which are crucial in maintaining stability of this joint um, and you've also got the teres major and the latissimus dorsi muscles um, so apart from the muscles you've got extra capsular ligaments which surround the joint and you've got bony processes um, so you've got um, the acromion process and you've got the coracoid process um, so all these different things add stability to the to the glenohumeral joint. So we'll start off by taking a look at the glenoid cavity. So I'll just remove the humerus. So we're looking laterally now um, at the right shoulder. So I'll remove the humerus and we'll take a look at the glenoid cavity. So this is the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Um, and it's not shown on this model, but the, the margins of this glenoid cavity are surrounded by a, fi a fibrocartilaginous collar called the glenoid labrum. So this sits around the, um, the perimeter or the margins of the glenoid cavity and actually um, adds a bit of depth to the glenoid cavity. So I've just switched over to this diagram here and we're looking at the same view, a lateral view of the right shoulder. So we've got the acromion uh, posteriorly and the coracoid process anteriorly. So you can see this, this fibrocartilaginous collar, the glenoid labrum surrounding the glenoid fossa um, and you can see superiorly this is the tendon of the um, long head of the biceps and it's been cut so this tendon is actually continuous with the glenoid labrum and it runs over the uh, glenohumeral joint and adds a bit of stability to it. So I've just switched back to the model and I've isolated the long head of the biceps muscle so you can see this running up on the humerus in the in between the intertubercular sulcus and it runs over the glenohumeral joint and you can see it attaching uh, to the supraglenoid tubercle so this this tendon at its origin is continuous with the glenoid labrum which i showed you in that previous diagram so just like in many other joints there's a joint capsule which surrounds the glenohumeral joint so the joint capsule consists of a fibrous and a synovial membrane. So the, the fibrous membrane wraps around the glenohumeral joint. So it wraps around um, the outside of the glenoid labrum and it actually encloses the head of the, uh, the origin of this, this tendon. So I've just switched back to a diagram. So, the, the, so we've seen this diagram before. So the fibrous um, membrane of the joint capsule actually encloses the labrum and encloses the origin of the long head of the biceps tendon. 
So this diagram here just shows the joint capsule itself. So you can see, see it enclosing the glenoid, um, glenohumeral joint and you can see its attachment on the anatomical neck of the humerus. So lining the fibrous membrane you've got the synovial membrane and it's important to just mention the synovial membrane because the synovial membrane at various points actually protrudes through the fibrous membrane and it forms bursae which are um, sort of cushions of fluid lined by synovial membrane which sort of act to reduce friction and to cushion the joint. Um, so the bursae are quite important to be aware of because they can get inflamed and cause pain in the shoulder joint. So I'll just mention a few of these bursae quickly. So um, medially, the, syno the synovial membrane protrudes through the fibrous membrane and it forms the subtendinous bursa of the subscapularis or the subscapularis bursae, bursa. And I'll just flick over to the 3D model in a moment, but I'll just mention this first. So you've also got um, a synovial sheath which wraps around the um, long head of the biceps tendon as it passes through the intertubercular sulcus between the greater and lesser tubercles of the humerus. So you can see this synovial sheath here. So this just reduces friction of this tendon. So we'll just take a look at a couple of those bursae that I mentioned. So looking here, we can see the the tendon of the subscapularis inserting onto the lesser tubercle of the humerus. So I'll just remove that and you can see the bursa that lies underneath. So I'll just remove the uh, this biceps tendon and the coracobrachialis muscle. And you can see this bursae sorry, bursa. Bursae is plural, bursa is singular. So you can see this um, bursa which sat underneath the tendon of the subscapularis muscle. So this is the subtendinous bursa of the subscapularis. So this is formed uh, by a protrusion of the synovial membrane through the fibrous membrane. So we've also got a few other bursae. So this big, large bursae here bursa um, is the subacromial and subdeltoid bursa which sits obviously under the acromion process and between the deltoid muscle and this is quite important because it can get inflamed because of the very narrow space between the acromion and the head of the humerus. You've also got this bursa which sits on top of the acromion and lies between the skin and the acromion. Um, you've got a small little bursa which lies underneath the coracoid process. So you can see the coracoid process here and the little bursa sits underneath it. Um, and then you've got bursae which sit um, in relation to the rotator cuff muscles. So you've got a, a bursa here as well. Um, but it's important to be aware, be aware of the subacromial and subdeltoid bursae and the um, subtendinous bursa of the subscapularis muscle. So just going back to this diagram again, so we're looking at the joint capsule of the um, glenohumeral joint. So the fibrous membrane of the joint capsule is thickened to form ligaments which support the joint. So we'll take a look at those ligaments now. So there are five ligaments you need to remember. So you've got three glenohumeral ligaments. Um, you've got the transverse humeral ligament and the coracohumeral ligament. So the glenohumeral ligaments um, can be seen here, but they're not really shown that clearly. As, they're not shown as distinct ligaments, but you've got a superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligament. And these attach um, onto the lesser tubercle um, and they, they originate on the, the margin of the glenoid cavity. So you've got a superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligament. Uh, next we've got this ligament here which is the transverse humeral ligament and this attaches well, it, it attaches from the lesser tubercle to the greater tubercle. 
Um, and this lies over the biceps tendon as it passes through the intertubercular sulcus. And lastly, we've got this ligament called the caracohumeral ligament because it attaches from the coracoid process to the humerus. Okay, so that's the shoulder joint. So just remember the articulating surfaces. It's a joint, synovial ball and socket joint between the head of the humerus and the glenoid cavity of the scapula. Um, there's a joint capsule um, which surrounds the joint. The synovial membrane protrudes through the fibrous membrane to, um, to form bursae and to wrap around the biceps tendon, long head of the biceps tendon. And you've got five ligaments. You've got the caracohumeral ligament, the transverse humeral ligament, and the three glenohumeral ligaments, superior, middle, and inferior. Um, stability to the joint is provided by muscles. You've got rotator cuff muscles, pectoralis major, deltoid, long head of the triceps, uh, long head of the biceps, uh, teres major, and you've got bony processes. You've got the acromion process, the coracoid process, and you've got um, extra capsular ligaments providing stability. You've got several movements. You've got flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, internal and external rotation, and circumduction. So quite a lot to learn there actually. But I'll make another tutorial which will cover the sort of movements at the shoulder joint and the muscles that produce these movements.